Okay, so I'm checking the time, and I've got just a couple more minutes before we open it up for um, for um, uh, question and answer. So I'm going to do something a little more controversial. Uh, I'm going to sort of end the uh, the general part of my talk just to remind you that what we talked about today is that heart disease, kidney disease, stroke are all increasing. Um, there's a lot of health inadequities and ethnic disparities and exorbitant healthcare costs. Uh, all of it is due to what's happening with the microbiome. And uh, I appreciate the chat where people are saying, you know, eating carcasses, what's the best politically correct way to say that? Um, fact of the matter is, uh, we need to just make sure that everybody understands what that really means and um, not eating deceased animals. As it turns out, <laughs> um, what I ask my patients to do, uh, you know, they've got coronary heart disease. I'm seeing them for the first time. I'm trying to change their diet. I give them the ABC diet. Say, first assignment is to go home, go in your kitchen, open the refrigerator. And if you see any dead bodies, go bury them in the backyard uh, and don't eat any of that stuff ever again. Uh, eating it is associated with all kinds of diseases, uh, most of which is mediated by the changes in the microbiome. And what we really need to do is everything that's prevention, diet and exercise, wherever we can, improve the microbiome, decrease our death rate. Okay, before I open it up for questions, uh, I'm going to uh, throw something at you that you may not have heard of. It turns out that uh, there is a whole science, peer-reviewed science now, uh, that I uh, was made aware of by one of my animal rights folks, okay, talking specifically about what happens to animals when they are um, uh, sacrificed to become food. It's not a, not comfortable for them. Uh, the cow will see what's happening, and it's a sentient being. It sees what's happening to the uh, cow in front of them, and they have a release of flight or fight um, hormones and cortisol. And so this actually, you would think that, oh, it's going to be okay. You eat the meat, even though this is in the bloodstream and it gets into the meat and people are going to eat it and it's not going to be a problem uh, because they will um, get rid of it with gastric acid or the metabolism that, you know, first pass through the liver is going to be fine. Well, it turns out it, it does affect the meat. And there is growing bodies of literature about behavior of humans who eat animals. Um, and uh, intimate partner aggression is a huge one. And if the best way to stop that kind of violence is to stop eating animals. Uh, how about um, prisoners? So there was this... Terry Moreland guy who actually uh, did a, uh, a plant-based nutrition intervention. And what ended up happening is the people who agreed to be on the vegan side of the big house ended up having no more racial tension and gangs um, issues. And the people who stayed on the food side where they uh, ate animal products all of that stuff remained. More importantly is recidivism dropped from the usual, oh, 65% of those prisoners end up back in prison down to about 2%. Now, it turns out that uh, this data has actually been a while, but it's kind of like starting to get into, um, <clears throat> into mainstream and people recognizing that they need to do something different when they are uh, taking these animals let's say offline, um, because that adrenaline and cortisol really does change the characteristic of the meat uh, and all of the things that they go through. I know it's a very uncomfortable part of the talk for, for me, but it is true peer-reviewed science. And that's what I do at every, at every talk. Uh, and people need to start talking about this. And, uh, you know, I, before I saw all this, I had heard you know, sort of grape, grapevine, as many of you have, oh, you know what? My um, my road rage went away when I stopped eating animal products. To the extent that that's true, this is probably why. 
So anyway, uh, I know that was a little extra. It's probably a little unexpected because uh, outside cardiology, uh, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it's not just the microbiome. Um, maybe there, there actually are um, these dysfunctional hormones that we don't want raised in our bloodstream uh, and people are actually eating them. Okay. Uh, so on that sad note, I'm going to open it up for, uh, uh, for discussion. And uh, thanks so much for your attention. It looks like we're up to 208 people. That's really great.